Texas Math Mundo audience, are we in store for a true treat today? In the house, we have Director Larry White. And Director Larry White's been busy as of late. He has compiled, authored, a chronology of UIL number sense. So Director Larry White's going to be talking about the history of UIL number sense right ahead. Let me take a quick moment and ask that if you enjoy this content, you please hit the subscription button and the notification bell, that you leave a comment below, and you smash that like button. I've got plenty of wonderful and beautiful things in store for this channel, and I truly appreciate your support. Director Larry White, the history of UIL number sets, right ahead. My name is Saul Cantu, and this is Texas Math Mundo. Are we in store for a true treat today? It gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, the current Number Sense Director and Assistant Mathematics Director, the Venerable Director Larry White. Uh, Director Larry White's always been an ardent supporter of my channel, so I'm so appreciative, appreciative of him. Um, he's, been, he's a legendary coach, was a legendary coach for many, many years. He was the director of both mathematics and number sets for nearly two decades. He continues on as the director of number sets and uh, as an assistant director of mathematics. And recently, he's been playing the role of historian, compiling, authoring a chronology of UIL number sets. Welcome, Director Larry White. Thank you, Saul. I'm glad to be here. Share whatever I want we can share and just sit and visit. Hey, I had a chance to peruse that chronology, and it's some fascinating stuff, so I'm really looking forward to this session. But before we get there, let me ask, how you doing? I'm doing fine. If everything's going well, I've been well, been healthy, no problems. We wrapped up all of our, our UIL tests this last week. Uh, I wrapped up, Cliff and I wrapped up the number sets, and then we proofed the state uh, math test, so we're... Uh, we're ready for it all to take place. And so I haven't been doing much traveling or anything, but just just enjoying life and uh, life's good. I've been working in my garden a little bit. And uh, so since we have some sunshine, of course, still need rain, but at least we have some sunshine. So yeah, everything's good. Got awesome. no problems. Awesome. And I got the chronology finished after nearly five long years. So that was really nice too. And, uh, Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, the fun part of the year is coming up, you know. Uh, district, region, <laughs> Team of State, State, all that stuff's coming up. I look forward to it. You looking forward to it? Oh, you bet. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a battle. I mean, there are so many great kids out there that are competing, and I've been on your Discord and watching some of the hoopla going on there. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's going to be a pretty good battle, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I think the kids are excited. Excited. It's good to be back in full swing. You know, uh, that COVID thing sure took us down a notch, but we're getting stronger and faster and, and uh, putting, putting Mr. McCurdy and I to work pretty hard trying to come up with good questions and good tests. Uh, you know, some of the kids want the test to be a little harder. Uh, some of them want it to be a little easier, but there's a fine line that we have to make sure we can make it competitive for everybody and yet challenge those super, super kids because there, there are some really super kids out there. There yeah. really is. There really is. But I tell you, you know, those, uh, those tests and the directorships are in the correct hands. You've been doing it for nearly two de decades. McCurdy's been wonderful. You've been wonderful as his mentor. And it's just uh, it's a really a wonderful thing uh, that you all do. And I'm so appreciative for all the work that you do. Yeah, I just this is my 21st year in number sets. And uh, I did the 19, you know, before Mr. McCurdy took over. He told me the other day, I don't remember we were, what we were talking about, but he said, you realize you cannot retire until 2028. He said, you have to stay with it till at least that time. And I said, well, I'm going to be a pretty old man. He said, yeah, but I was always the president. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so, I said, well, maybe I can hang out another five years. We'll see. We'll see. Funny, funny. 
So we're here to talk about that chronology. You know, uh, there's some fascinating stuff. I got a chance to peruse it, really fascinating. So let me ask you, you know, what was the genesis of the project? What prompted you to undertake such a task? It, it probably started back around 2009 when I got to go to the 100th anniversary of UIF. Oh, wow. uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the 100th year anniversary. And we got, I got to go that because I was a director, my wife and I went, and I looked at all the old things and things that were there, and I thought to myself, you know, it's nice that we have that kind of history, because UIL is nowhere else in the, in the States other than Texas, and it's a powerful thing. And then in 1918, Number Sense had its 20, uh, 75th anniversary. I think that's 2018, yeah, okay. 2018. Number sense like we know it, uh, like the test we see today, the one that began in 1943, that actual number sense, is that's its 75th anniversary. And I was talking to somebody and saying, we need to do something. Yeah. And, it, you know, it sort of floated around, but nobody, you know, it sort of lost its interest, but it, it didn't lose interest in me. And I said, of all the things that... UIL and number sense has done to me, uh, done for me over the many years. I felt like I d needed to do something for it, and uh, and so I said, you know, I'm going to go to work. My intention was to write a history until I got into looking for information, and the archives are scattered. They have uh, they have a bunch of books and stuff with a lot of stuff in it, but there's nothing consistent. There's not number sense. If you, I had to scour book after book after book. And then luckily, all the leaguers, since 1917, I have a copy of all the leaguers on DVD, uh, so I could scour through all the leaguers. But that was a time-consuming thing where I would have to go through and look and look. Uh, so I, I could see there was a lot of gaps and I was never going to be able to pull a history together uh, because there just wasn't enough history out there that I could get my hands on. So I decided to do this timeline chronology and grab everything I could find and put it together. And at least it gives us an idea of things that went on year by year and the people that were involved uh, throughout the years and finding that information about the directors. So, yeah, that's how it sort of all began. And uh, I just wanted to do something to, to give to UIL for their history books before I decided to give it up. Awesome, awesome. That's so great. And you know what? You're right. Here, here, the beauty of Number Sense and what it's done for generations and upon generations of young people and kids and, and motivated them and inspired them. You're so true. The beauty of it all, so happy that you're trying to preserve that. Yeah, and I, I, I love all the contests. I love even the contests I didn't coach. Uh, but Number Sense has always been special to me because it it requires the, the, the training and the bending and the, and the manipulation of the mind. Uh, and to be able to, for kids to be able to think fast, uh, you know, I think that's a powerful, powerful thing. I hear people say, well, it's only a 10-minute test. And I said, yeah, but it's 10 minutes. It covers so much material and so fast. And, yeah, I, I, I just think number sense is just a magnificent thing. And I, there's nothing I like more than to sit around and play with numbers and be rechecking a problem. And all of a sudden, I see something else happen. And I go, ooh. I wonder if this is true, and all of a sudden I go off on a tangent, and I'm working on some other problem over there, and uh, and and it and something creates and pops in my mind, and I say, "Wow, that's that's just fascinating." I get as excited today learning something new or developing something as I did 30, 40 years ago. You know, beautiful, that's, uh, beautiful. Yeah. You know, you describe two eras eras of number sense. What are the distinctive features? Can you define the two eras and what are the distinctive features of each era is? Yes, in, be in the beginning, uh, 1924, they had a arithmetic contest for county schools. And th 
And then in 1926, they had the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. And so there were two contests that were, they weren't in the same format we see them. Uh, we see number sense, but it was mental mathematics, and it was called number sense because one of the greatest things I found when I was doing all this was that 1929 manual, the uh, first number sense manual ever in 1929, and everything was based off of that. Uh, so those that particular period, uh, the the three R's, when it first came out, this is funny, if you read that, the three R's when it first came out was made for seventh graders and only for rural schools that had no more than two teachers. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was, very, it was very limited. And the, uh, uh, the arithmetic contest went on all along, but it was for county competition. They didn't have... Uh, district is up there was a county competition wow. and so the kids were doing these things prior to 1943 in a little bit different fashion but if you look at that 1929 manual he's got all those practice problems in there and my understanding he, he wrote hundreds of problems who's the thousand, author who was the author uh, of 1929 was it calhoun it, and it actually wasn't a manual. It was actually a what they call a UIL uh, uh, bulletin. Uh, yes, it was. It was John W. Calhoun. I'm sorry. I was thinking of somebody else. Yes, it was uh, John Calhoun, professor of mathematics at the University of Texas. Wow. And he, wrote, he wrote that thing <clears throat> at the time because, to, because he had the big idea of math. And if you read, if you get on the chronology, reading why he did that and the, and the other people that were, worked with him. It was pretty phenomenal what, with what he had to say. So, yeah, that sort of uh, set the stage. And all those problems, when you look at them, uh, a bunch of them that are down there, they look so much like today's. Really? Uh, but but they, were, they were more intense. Uh, there were some problems that he would ask that, you know, you sit there and go, wow, I don't know <laughs> if my kids could do such a thing, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, it, 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 it was fun looking at the problems he made and reading the, 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 the actual bulletin, uh, you know. <clears throat> so, yeah, <clears throat> that was probably what got it all started. And as far as I know, they used that uh, as the guidelines for creating tests for the that early years. Oh really? Uh, for the county contest and the three R's. And they used and they used that information. Uh, so yeah, it, it was pretty good. And then in 1943, that's when the uh, of course we all know 1943 the war was going on. Uh, and the military recruiters came to UIL along with a couple of math teachers, and uh, their names are on in that thing too, that wanted to find a comp test that would make kids think on their feet because the, the military said the kids couldn't think with their minds. And so we need to come up with something. And so number sense got moved from the way it was prior to that to 1943 to the format we have today, except they had a hundred problems then. Really? As, instead of 80, yeah, there was a hundred. And it was five points correct and five points wrong. And, and not all answers had to be precise. Oh. They, could, they, could, they could be close estimates. They might say, uh, find this problem, find this answer within 2%. You know, oh. Now, we have, star, we have the star problems. But they actually, back in, <clears throat> and even in the early years, they, uh, <clears throat> the the test didn't have to be exact oh, wow. until until they made the rule change. So 1943, <clears throat> they began the actual series. <clears throat> I used to have all the tests, wow. starting with letter A in 1943. I, used, I had them all the way to today, uh, but somewhere I lost the box, and now I have them from R on to today, all the tests from letter R. From the single letters, it went to the double letters, and then it went to years, and so on down the line. So I had all those up there. 
Now, there were two tests. I never could find any place where it was mentioned at all. And that were the, let's see, those were the, uh, I believe the I and the L tests, letter I and letter L. No, there's no reference made to them anywhere. Really? Uh, they referenced J and K, but they never referenced I and L anywhere. But they must uh, certainly exist, or they must have existed at one time. Well, I, I went back and I sort of started in 1943 when you look at that list of the directors yeah. when the directors took place and if everything lined up correctly like it i think i did there is two gaps really? and i think it letter i and letter l uh so undoubtedly there was something about the letter i they didn't want to use the letter l they didn't want to use because all the all the test letters are are correct oh, wow. and uh, like i say when you look at that uh that chronology of that deal of the of the actual test writers uh, you you can see there's a gap uh, there's a gap in those letters but there's not a gap in the number of tests it goes a through it goes a through h and that's 43 to 50 and then it then j starts up in 1951 oh, so, so either wow. either there wasn't they're just, I could not find anything about I and H. It was just, it was just amazing. Really? Then, wow. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. But that, that was a long time ago, and that was way in the beginning. So something could have happened in that, between 43 and 50 that I don't know and couldn't find any information on. Okay. And, uh, so, so, yeah. But it's pretty cool. Oh, wow. So then, anyways, <clears throat> that's the two levels. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Pre, like uh, say. World War II and post World War II, the World War II. Yeah, 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 and and so uh, you know, I and I, I I did as much of the pre as I could find, uh, and and there's some pretty interesting things that were happening in the pre. Talk talk, you know, what they're reading that stuff, and but most of it, of course, we went to the post where it's what we're used to seeing yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. until then. Were you surprised by any of your findings during your research? What surprised you the most? Uh, when I read that, when you put that on there, I read, I read that to myself and says, wow, what surprised me the most? And so much of it surprised me. I mean, it, it, was, it was things I, you know, I just didn't even realize was going on. Um, when, I, when I ran across the young man from Wink that had the highest score, uh, and still has the highest score, uh, uh, the 391. I said, no, wait a minute. I, I'm in 390. I said, wait a minute. He can't score 390. You know, he beat 391, but he couldn't score 390. And so I went back, and I got to study him, and he scored 390 because it was 10 points. I mean, five points for, five points against. So he could either do uh, – 78 of them, or it could do, you know, a yeah. combination. Uh, and, and so that sort of surprised me. I did not realize at the time that it was a 5-5 situation. Uh, so that was pretty neat. And then when, <laughs> with taking that in mind, I, I decided, well, what about the current high score? And the highest score that I've found talking with other people and that I've looked past in the results as a, uh, been uh, a 386 and that occurred twice anthony newberry uh is it uh oh shoot up north he still teaches there coaches there now anthony newberry 1991 it was either 91 or 92 i couldn't get him to tell me which year it was the same time my son was competing and so i knew anthony when he was a boy uh, and uh, and the other one this scored 386 was Jonathan Zhang uh, from Klein, uh, and he scored in 2017. Ironically, on both tests, 1991 test and, and my test, 2017, we had to throw one problem. I had to throw a problem out, and they had to throw one out then. Don Scow was doing it, and he had to throw a problem out. So the problem was only worth 395 points. 
had we not had to throw both those out, and neither problem was a, it, it was just the way it was, it was stated incorrectly. They were both gimme problems. Really? So both of those boys would have actually scored 391 wow. and would have had the highest score. Uh, but so far, that's it. Now, with that in mind, I am anticipating a perfect test this year. Really? Yeah. I, I sense there's a couple of young men that I saw last year that I think have a really good shot. You want to name uh, names? Well, there's a freshman. You know him. Really? Uh, you know that freshman boy from uh, Clements? Was uh, it Clements? The freshman. I'm not so sure which freshman. Dylan Patel he won the, had the highest score last year. Yes, but now, but he went. Was he a freshman? No, no, no. He, he's not a no. freshman. Yeah. Hmm. Justin Lai was he the freshman? No, but he was also from Clements, but not a freshman. Well, that freshman boy, of course, now, now, Kim don't get wrong, Dylan and Justin both could do it, too. You know, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. That, yeah. Aiden, uh, Aiden uh, uh, could, could, sir. Ellison could be there. Uh, but I have a sneaky feeling that young man, of a question I can remember his name. Yeah, yeah. See, if, see if I can find it. He was a freshman last year, or was he going to be a freshman this year? No, he was a freshman last year. Oh, a freshman last year. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Not one of those Corpus Crispy Flower Bluff kids, was it? Or no. And he and he won last year. So I'm looking at last year's winners. Dylan Patel had the 337. Justin Lee, of course, he's gone. Eric Tong, Kyle Lou. And maybe that Kyle Lou. Yeah, I think he's from Corpus. Is he Corpus Crispy Flower Bluff? Yeah, Flower Bluff, yeah. yeah. They were yeah. they're great. <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah, they're they're gonna be salty. <clears throat> Sarah, I just have a sneaky feeling in my mind that uh one of those <clears throat> top fellers are going to be <clears throat> gonna be coming through and uh, scoring extremely well. And uh, they they've been getting pretty close even in practice tests, but there's a lot of difference between practice and state, and that that's the big issue. Uh but yeah, I'm I'm sort of looking forward to maybe it's going to happen. Hey, you know, it's it's unreal how talented these kids are. It's just unreal. Yeah, I mean, eighty problems in ten minutes. It's just, it's just, it's it's just uncanny. Just, yeah. and I think that's what's so exciting about this whole thing. So yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. So. Were there any interesting stories or curious personalities that emerged from your research? Is there a story or an individual that emerged that was most pivotal or vital in the story of UIL Number Sense? One of my favorites was when I saw this picture. And by the way, I was able to post all those pictures because they were in the leaguers. I could, I could not, without getting permission from people, I couldn't do that. Oh. You know, because you have to have permission from people to post things like that. But all the pictures came from the leaguer, except for Don Scow. I had to beg him to get a picture taken <laughs> so because he didn't like pictures, and there was none in the leaguer. So I had to get a picture taken from him and get his permission. But all the rest of them are pictures from the uh, leaguer uh, that I was able to find. And, and when I ran across the picture in 1974, there was a young man that was a double winner, and it was Joe Cuellar. Ah. And Joe, Joe Cuellar, it was fascinating when I saw that because I had just finished visiting with Joe online. He had sent a problem to me he wanted me to look at. He was retiring, and which broke my heart because I, I remember Joe when he was young yeah. and just began watched him go through all his career and uh and so it was when i saw that i thought to myself gosh i was just talking to joe and he's getting ready to retire and here he is he was the first number sense and slide rule state champion in 1964. Really? and here was here was this picture of holding up his two things and i said wow that's joe <laughs> and so yeah it, 
it was a personal thing for me to see that. I, and I, of course, I immediately contacted Joe. In fact, I think Pete uh, Fuentes might have gotten his email or something. But uh, anyways, uh, I was able to uh, uh, visit with him and send him the picture, and, and he loved it. We talked a little bit about things, and he, he shared some things with me. So that was a, that was a neat experience uh, cool. to see that. Uh, and then some of the things that happened, of course, the, the, the high, high scores were, were interesting. And I think one of the most interesting and surprising was being fortunate to find a copy of that Calhoun number sense develop, development number sense manual from 1926, because it began it all. And I thought that was just fantastic. Uh, you know, just it, it, I never dreamed I would find such a thing. I had heard, I would read little snippets about you need to see this and you need to see that. And I said, gosh, is there any way I can find that? Thing? And for some lucky reason, I was going through one of the volumes, leafing through and finding things. And I, I found that thing and I thought, wow. And they allowed me to take a, a copy of it. So I have a copy of it, really? the original. So it had been yes. referenced several times. You had heard it referenced. And so you were kind of curious yes. about it, and then you found it. Yeah, they, they, they would reference it in the, in the leaguer back in the early days. They would say, uh, the county schools, you need to have your kids practice the problems from bulletin, blah, 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 blah. And I kept seeing that bulletin and that developing number sense. And I said, wow, I wish I had that thing. And I went searching. And I found it. And that thing you see there is a copy of the original. Really? <laughs> the one that's in the yeah. It is the copy of the So, because uh, there was no, you know, no place that I just found it and got lucky. And I, I, that was exciting. But there, there's so much of it that went on, uh, you know, through the years. Uh, you know, I remember uh, Dr. Lamb. I, I, I coached kids that took those tests. And I, I knew him, not personally, but I knew him as a as a director, and I knew what he was like, and, and I would read some of the things that I found, and I'd put them down, and I'd think back as a coach, and I said, oh, I remember that. <laughs> yep, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. And so being able to do that with him and then with Don Scow, of course, you know, Don was my mentor and and got me started with all this, and being able to look back at all the things he did uh, you know, he, he shared his story with me, and I think it's in the chronology that when he first began, uh, he was the assistant to Janelle Beck, the only woman director wow. uh, uh, who served twice, once as an assistant, and then later on. As a, uh, and my understanding is she's still alive really? and lives in lives in Round Rock. I tried to contact her, but I never could get any response. I wanted to visit with her. Uh, so Janelle Beck was the uh, was the first woman, and Don Scow was assigned to be her assistant. And what happened was he would write the test, and she would run the meets. And uh, he was sharing with me that uh, uh, one year, the first year that he wrote the test, uh, she was doing the contest, and she didn't go through all the papers, all the tests. Uh -huh. And when the kid flipped it over, there was a blank page. Oh. And, uh, and Don said, it told him immediately that you have to check every test. And that was the last parting words he told me when I took over. You always check every test. And we do. Every page on every math test, every front and back, looking for any marks. Uh, I go into state early. Uh, to spend several hours just going through the test. Wow. You do want that to happen <laughs> yeah. to these kids, you know. What a shocker. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and so Cliff and I do that now with number sense and math, just like I used to do both of them by myself. Well, Andy Sabata used to help me in previously. So, yeah, there's a, there were so many neat things. It would be impossible for me to tell you exactly the most important there were some personal things, and I, but I guess finding that, finding that uh, developing number sense was just phenomenal. Now, is that uh, published in its entirety in the chronology, or do you have to find it somewhere else? No, that's published in the chronology. It's uh, 
it's down there about, oh, I don't know, somewhere around page 200. Uh, the, it, it, is, it, is in, it is in its form. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Uh, along with right, right after it is the, is the county contest in arithmetic rules and guidance. And that is in its, that's another bulletin. And it's in its, it's in its full. Yeah, I think somewhere around 200. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's exactly the way I have it. Awesome. It's so precious. It's so great that something that had been referenced and that really molded and uh, focused everybody for generations was preserved. That's awesome. Well, you know, the, 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 I guess the early, the schools didn't have connections to Austin like we do. The county schools and stuff, you know, they didn't have, they just didn't run off to Austin way back then. Uh, <clears throat> so teachers that wanted to get involved and wanted to hold these county contests needed something to do the county contest with. Yeah. And so they would, there would always be a write-up. They would say, you need to look at the problems in, in the development number sense, the, the bulletin number, and that's where they go. And, of course, it was always in the leaguer. In the, in the main section, there are resources. See this, see this. And I said, golly, well, I'd like to see that. <laughs> so I did. Awesome. And, uh, awesome. Yeah, it, it was great. It was great. If you had to summarize, what would you say are the major highlights of your work, of that chronology? It, it, it's amazing to me <clears throat> that it started out in 1943, and it literally has not changed much at all to today. There are still, <laughs> I remember several years ago when I brought sets in the number sense and somebody says, we've never done sets before on number sets. No, it was done pre-43. <laughs> it's been around forever. And then the, uh, the bases. So, oh, man, bases, what, what is wrong? No, bases, you can go back and look at the tests way back when. In fact, I think I have samples of, of tests in the chronology uh, from each of the directors, and you're going to see bases. So you look at it, and, and not a lot has changed. It, it, it's basically been consistent for, what, 75, 80 years? You know, what is it, 43 to, to 23, 80 years? It's been consistent. Uh, some tests were harder, some... Uh, I, th I think Charles, Dr. Lamb, probably his double double letter series were killers. Uh, they were long. They were, in fact, he printed them on long paper. Really? On leaf paper, yeah. <laughs> so they were long. Uh, they were wordier uh, back then. You know, we've managed to, can, you know, reduce the size of the of the thing and get less lettering and less wording. Uh, but other than that, it's been very consistent, uh, director after director. Uh, now, I, I, I did find it interesting, up until Don Scapp, all the directors were professors at, at the University of Texas. Oh, wow. Wow. Don Scapp was, you know, he, when he took over, he was uh, at Edinburgh, uh, down in Edinburgh. Because, uh, you know, he was a coach. Uh, uh, back in, in the day, and then he he took over when he took over. He was in Edinburgh, and then I was actually the first high school teacher wow. to to take over. You know, when when I retired, so uh, everybody else worked at the University of Texas, and uh, and that, which I thought found so, I found that sort of interesting because professors usually aren't into that kind of yeah. thing, you know, and and yet. It just kept, they just picked up on Calhoun's idea and just kept bringing it forward, and it was pretty neat. Uh, the, we were talking a little while ago about something that was surprising. One of the things I found that I didn't know and Don Scow didn't know, got to have dinner with Don Scow uh, this year. Uh, 
we went down to Edinburgh, did a student activity conference. Oh. Uh, Roberto Garza and all, all, all my favorite ballet coaches were there. I mean, we it was just like a homecoming party. <laughs> I just love those ballet coaches down there. Oh. And uh, Don Scout came, and uh, we had dinner together. And then he came and sat in the uh, in the uh, sessions with us, and we had a great time. But I told him, I said, Don, did you know that you were uh, the outstanding coach of the year uh, way back when? I'm trying to remember when that was. Let me look. I think I wrote that down. Uh, yes, 1972, the director was Milo Weaver, and uh, Don Scow was a coach at McAllen then. In fact, he was Leo Ramirez's coach. Really? Uh, and, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, he and my old Weaver felt like the, the coaches weren't getting enough recognition, so he selected the coaches of the year, and Don Scow was one of the coaches of the year. So I told him, I said, did you know you were the coach of the year in 1972? He says, I don't even remember 1972. <laughs> so. But yeah, it's, that was pretty interesting. And those are all listed in the chronology, too. Uh, what what uh, Don, Milo Weaver thought was coaches of the year and uh, how many years they went to state and stuff like that. So. Hey, you know, I did yeah. peruse the chronology, and I did notice that there are different areas where coaches and teachers were, like, uh, rewarded in different, in different ways. Yes, they were. There was uh, the Southwest... Uh, Oh, what was the name of that thing? See if I can bring it. I don't want to tell you that without saying that. I'll see if I can find it. There was a organization that gave coaches uh, in all the d disciplines uh, awards. Uh, the, oh, the Southwest Actuaries Club. Yes. And the Southwest Actuary Club gave out uh awards each year to UIL coaches. Now, the only ones I listed were the number sense coaches because that's what this was all about. But, you know, it wasn't that it didn't go to other coaches. They gave all UIL coaches, top coaches things. And so I, I ran across that a lot, and I felt like those coaches deserved to be in the chronology because they, they, uh, they were part of the history. Yes. You know, they built the programs and made them go. Uh, so I was not trying to be judgmental what should go in and what shouldn't. If I found it and it had to do with number percent, it was in there. And uh, because it, it was more about something that happened at the time. So, yeah, the <clears throat> those uh, the actuary club went on for a long, long time uh, awesome. doing that for coach. I thought that was pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, giving is. them cash I mean, I think the cash award in 1957 was $300. In 1957, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. you know? That's pretty good money. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, so it, 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 was, it, was, it was pretty neat when I saw that. That was something different. Awesome, awesome. So what goals do you hope are reached by authoring such a work? What should a modern student take away from reading your chronology? History is just a, a means for us to realize how far we've come and how far we can go. And, and, and to honor all those in the past, a lot like we do veterans, you know, when you're, you, you have flags and have veterans celebrate, we honor those people. Uh, just means we, we're going to be looking forward to what's coming. And, you know, when you sit down and think about just your time, your lifetime, my lifetime, what has gone on in such a short period of time? I mean, I'm 76 years old, and I remember when there was no TV. And think about what we're doing. Today. We're Zooming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're Zooming wirelessly. And, and, you know, so much has happened. And when you look at number sense, this chronology, so much has happened over all these years. And the stability of UIL is amazing. UIL stuck with it. 
they started it, they stuck with it. University of Texas stayed with it. Uh, for the kids, so when the kids go back and look at all this, it's not like surprise, here's this thing called number sense. It has been here and it's going to outlast every one of them. <laughs> you know, yeah. They're going to, you know, we're going to continue to have great kids make great feats and move on. And you can interview them because they've done such great things. And then we're going to have people right behind them. There are freshmen and eighth graders and seventh graders right now that are just ready to knock on the door and do it again. This gives them a chance to go back and look and see how far we've come back. But as an actual goal, I just wanted to do it. Uh, I wanted to leave something to pay back what it gave me. What, what you are on number sense in, in competition has given me both as a coach and as, as a teacher and as a person and as a director. You know, it is it has sort of formed my life, and uh, it it it's 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 just my way to pay it back, and it's it, it's one of the reasons why I chose not to try to sell it. I didn't want any money. Uh, you know, I wanted to leave something. Uh, you can call it a legacy if you like, but it's mainly I want to leave something for others to go back and say, "Wow." What is number sets? And so uh, I decided to not sell it, give it to UIL to post in their archives. Uh, and then I got this really neat idea in my mind. My wife and I had been discussing about doing a scholarship, and we did. We set up a scholarship called the Larry and Mona White Number Sense Scholarship. And it's uh, $1,000 uh, for the freshman year. Two of them, one for a girl, one for a boy. They can't say that in, in the write-up because you know how that is. Right. Uh, but the, the guidelines are uh, for the committee to choose a boy and a girl uh, who are interested in teaching uh, mathematics in junior high, elementary, high school. I don't care what. Uh, and so by doing that, and we're going to continue to do that as long as we're capable, uh, I'm just taking, I wanted to take some of the money I receive for what I do and do that. And I, then I thought, well, you know what, if we could set that up just right, uh, we could maybe get donations. Uh, and if we can build that thing up to another thousand dollars, we'll give a third one or a fourth one. Uh, and then if it gets more than enough for four, we'll save it for next year and do four next year. Uh, so the idea was, you know, uh, and this idea came about, not me doing the scholarship, but the idea of donating to the scholarship came about Andy Zapata and I talked one year, several years ago before COVID, about creating a scholarship where people that have been in number sets uh, and it were champions or weren't champions, but they use that skill to go on life and be really good, maybe they would like to contribute uh, to what helped them go through life. And then we could build up this neat scholarship, but it never came to pass. We, we we've struggling how to go about doing it. But uh, fortunately with uh, the help of a person at uh, TILF, I was able to pull this off and we were able to set it up. And now uh, if you, if a, if an ex champion or an ex number sensor wants to donate, uh, they can they can click on the link and donate the scholarship and it will go into a scholarship for young people to come on and uh, it's just not my way of giving back and I think that was the real goal that in leaving it for the archives uh, just to pay back for all the things that that they, that it's done for me and it's still doing for me I'm still I still think I'm not getting brain brain lapses as much because I'm still playing with numbers. Right. You know, I, I still play with numbers every day. And I think that's keeping my mind uh, sharper. It's diminishing, but it's still playing, staying pretty sharp. Well, you know, I will say what an awesome idea with the scholarship. 
uh, you know, and I hope that blows up. I really hope it blows up because it's such an awesome idea. And there's been countless of generations of number sensors, countless of, of kids inspired go on to their lives. And uh, number sense has such an integral part in their inspiration. So I also wanted to say your toil, your work, your labor will benefit posterity. You know, it's that number sense chronology, it'll be there for generations to come and it will benefit posterity for sure. Yeah. Do you feel that you've helped preserve the legacy of those founders? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, you know, I don't know how many people, I've heard people ask, well, who was the director before such and such? And somebody will go, I have no clue. You know, those type of things get lost over the years. Uh, just like my, I will get lost over the year one day, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, I, th I think, uh, I think everything that's in there will always remain, people will be able to go back and look, gosh, there was a guy called Milo Weaver, you know, that, that did these things and uh, Janelle Beck, you know, uh, just, you know, and, the, you know, a lot of us today are know the infamous Don Scout. <laughs> uh, and, and we know the Leo Ramirez is in, uh, you know, the Denise Award is in there when it first began. And the uh, first year the Denise Award was given, uh, uh, Leo Ramirez won it. Uh, and, uh, he beat me and uh, <laughs> me and Jack Barton. Uh, and I didn't know Jack Barton was in that first year, but Jack Barton from Lubbock Coronado up there, he was one of the ones and, and me and then Leo Maris <clears throat> and then the others. And uh, so to, to not get selected because of little real Maris, it was a feather in my hat because uh. Leo Maris was the guru at the time. Uh. And, uh, have a great deal of respect for him and and what he does and so yeah i think uh, all those people need their legacy uh because they've contributed i mean just think if we didn't have andy zapata and ford robertson create tmsa yeah and and, and leo was the first president of tmsa uh you know we wouldn't have that great organization uh without those people so yeah, we need we need to look back and honor those people, and then continue to do what you're doing, honoring these kids now. And and you've talked to some ex competitors, uh, some ex coaches. Uh, I, I was fascinated by the one you did with the, the lady um, from the valley. Uh, you did it here recently. I can't think of her name. A lady from the valley. Uh huh. Uh, she's a doctor, uh, you know, mathematician. Oh, gosh, what was her? She talked about her upbringing in down down the valley and how it contributed to her success. I, I should have found that and read that. You know, but wrote that. She, it was a fan. It was a fantastic interview, and and it didn't even go in the direction of of, of UIL. It went in the direction of how math changed. You her know, life. So many wonderful stories. So much good that UIL has done. You know, it just, it's, I, I, I feel very lucky to be able to share these stories. You know what I'm saying? Because it's so beautiful, the characters that play a role in this wonderful thing. And so it's just so wonderful. Like you mentioned all these names, Leo Ramirez. And Leo Ramirez was mentored by Don Scow. And the interconnection between all of these figures, you know, and, and the long chain of continuity from you know Weaver to Beck to Calhoun to to all of this is so beautiful to preserve. Yeah, it, I think so. I I think it. Uh, in fact, the very first thing I did was create that timeline uh, with the with the test and the uh, and the directors. Uh, that was my first real deep reach uh, to do that. And then I can't remember where I found the list of state champions. Yeah, uh, but that was fascinating too to find all the state champions, nineteen forty-three, and then the team champions when they began. <coughs> so that that was a neat, fascinating thing to find as well, because all those kids went back, you know, and and Dan Glover from Wink, the highest score person to score, uh, and then you know, Jonathan Zang and Anthony Newberry. Yeah, these these are kids that are now coaches. Uh, some of them, uh, 
Newberry's been coaching a long, long time. And uh, yeah, we needed to hey. need to say something about them and keep him keep him on the list. Hey, you know, one of the things that they hit home for me, I don't know, no, you know, you mentioned Ermity Minor. You know Ermity Minor? Ermity Minor was one of my closest friends. I cried like a baby when we lost her. Her daughter, you know, her daughter's name Ernie Menard, right? Oh, yeah. She's the one who introduced me to all this. She's the one who got yeah. me into this, just so you know. <laughs> so that was a connection. Ermini and Jonathan Trent, but Ermini Minor was one of the people uh, who really got me into this. So I, I, I saw my connection there. I was like, wow. And so it was yeah. her mom. Her mom had a legacy. Yeah. Er Ermini, Mama Ermini, uh, her and I, when I was coaching, we had the best old times. Right. And then I met her daughter. Of course, her daughter competed, you know, back in. And so I, then I met her daughter. And then her daughter was the one that contacted me about her mama passing. And it was a, it was a sad, sad day uh, because I loved her. Uh, she, she was a hoot. Uh, yeah, she was. She was um, Jonathan Tran. Uh, Jonathan was one of the. Best, best go getters I ever knew when I was when I was first started uh, as a director and when I was coaching I knew him. Uh, he was a fascinating person and and I loved it when he became an administrator became because he became one of those I didn't love him leaving the classroom and number in UIL because he was so positive but when he became an, a, an administrator he was one of those administrators that uh, Cliff talks about that support the kids. Oh, he was all for every those old kids wanted. He was there. Yes, I know? agree. I agree. Yeah. So. And, Dude, uh, we could go on and on with names and names. Like Faye Parrish, Josie Mallory. You know, we could go on and on with these wonderful, beautiful people that we've encountered through this, through this, you know? Yeah. The wonderful thing about it is I knew them as a coach and friends. And then I knew him as coaches, as the director. And uh, I, I don't remember if I mentioned that to you. Josie Mowry, <laughs> you know, she had the reddest lipstick known to mankind. And she loved to come up to the meeting uh, and before the state meet and just plant an old kiss right there. And I'd have to wear that big old red lipstick on my side of my face, but I wore it as an as a, bond, a band of honor. Wow. <laughs> she, she just loved to do that. Yeah, I, I knew all those people, uh, you know, uh, when they were, when they're crazy. And undoubtedly, they left some type of notes, because I know when uh, uh, you mentioned her name, she, down in the Beaumont area. Oh, uh, Faye Parish. Faye Parish. When Faye Parrish passed on, uh, her son called me. Really? Uh, and I didn't know her son. But she he called and introduced himself and said, I know Mama would like you to know that she's passed on. And it just, you know, because we were that close. Yeah. And, of course, we worked with TMS again. Yeah, we could talk about names and, and people. Uh, I think of uh, so many of the old Joe Franco at middle school at uh, Fort Stockton. Oh, oh gosh, really? he was, you talk about a man that he had things going in the middle school like nobody I knew. Because I coached middle school and high school, so I had a lot of dealings with him. And uh, Joe Franco was unbelievable. Bo Boohorn and Calculator. And I could go back to those days and see all those people uh, and they, they contributed to all of this stuff. Hey, Bullhorn, I think he coached Keith Taylor, if I'm correct. The guy he did. Me. So you see he, all the connections, man, all the connections. Yeah, I was I, I was coaching. I, I knew when Keith Taylor won. I was there. Wow, <laughs> wow. You know? yeah. And so guys like him keep it going today. Guys like him that's keep it. it going today. And that's what's important. They, they keep on coming. They, they, they get back in the profession and they keep the skills going. Uh, yeah, and that, that's a legacy within themselves. And, yeah, I remember when you did Keith's uh, interview, he was talking about Bo, and I, I was thinking about when he went to, when he got, he wasn't too happy about not winning that year. <laughs> so he was coming back the next year. Yeah, he, I, Keith probably didn't remember that I was coaching back then. Uh, but uh, yeah, I knew Keith when he was a boy, just like I knew Anthony Newberry and, and uh, Hilario. 
you know, I knew I knew Ilario when he was in eighth grade. Wow! Wow! That's <laughs> you know, great so, stuff. Wow. so a lot of that stuff is interesting because it was personal to me as a coach and uh, goes along. Awesome. And I, you know, I've always said that I don't know why in the world my cohorts would want me to be the direct their director. Uh, but they they all recommended it, and so it, it sort of made me feel good that we had that kind of relationship, and they had that kind of trust in me to keep the program going in the right mind and not make a big change. So yeah, and twenty one years lot. later, twenty one years later, they know they made the right decision. They yeah, know they made I, the right I, decision. I hope so. I hope so. I'm, and I keep and I keep find trying to find challenges. Few more little challenge here, another challenge there. I've got a real nice one for next year. <laughs> so. All right, hey, it's great to reminisce. It's great to reminisce, but hey, let's take a moment to talk about this year. Will you be at Team SCA State next week? No, I'm not going to be able to make Team SCA oh. State this year. It's uh, unfortunately, uh, I, it just that it just didn't work out. Got some first, got some personal issues I have to take care of. So, yeah. Uh, have you been following the scores this year? Yes, yes. Been uh, as many as I can find. Most of them is for, are from you. <laughs> you know, I can, a lot of times I can't get on the live one, and I have to come back and look at it again. But most of them are there. Cliff will send me some every once in a while. Uh, you know, we used to get a lot of them, but it's got to where people almost said, almost are a little bit don't want to share with the directors. <laughs> you know, we're, you know. Some people are a little afraid of the directors for some reason, I guess. And we're just good old boys, and we're willing to talk to anybody. But, yeah, I've been following some of those scores and uh, uh, watching some of those kids. And, you know, I, I wrote some names down. And, of course, we talked a little bit about a while ago, uh, you know, uh, Aiden Gertizer. Gertizer yeah. Uh, uh, he, he's 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 got those shots. Of course, Nicholas Ellison is just oh. uh, he's just he's just an animal. Uh, there's a Tony Wang up yes, at Lubbock. Lubbock. But now, Tony came to the SAC Student Activity Conference up in Lubbock this year and took the number sense test and scored 360 something. Wow. That guess just cold. And uh, he didn't stick around long enough for me to talk with him. I wish he would have on division, but he's he may be a shocker. He may be a he may be a shocker. Derek Lee in five A from Sherilyn Pioneer. I would mention his name. Edgar Lemus from Edinburgh North. Now Edgar, yeah, yeah. Well, anybody goes by, uh, uh, dropped his name. Uh, Dylan Patel. Uh, yeah, all these coaches. Guys. Oh, the coach, coach uh, Roberto, Roberto Garza, Garza? Roberto, yeah, Roberto. Anybody coached by Roberto is going to be pretty salty. You know those two boys that have that uh, education academy. Oh, uh, Juan, Juan out and, here. You know, they, were, they were on his top number sense team way back when. Yeah, right, if right, he right. if if if, um, if Garza is messing with them, they're going to be good. You can nearly bank on it. And I'm going to tell you what. Uh, Peter's doing a heck of a job, too. Oh, yes. Went, yes, he, he's doing a heck of a job. I got tickled him on, uh, on uh, the Discord when I was looking at it, and somebody had written, written a problem in there, and how do you do it? And, and they, <clears throat> some of the kids were just throwing a shortcut out, and some of the kids were trying to explain. I prefer the explaining part myself or the hints, but I got tickled. Uh, Peter come on there and says, there's something better. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't expect it. Teasing him. There's teasing something them. better. Yeah. And he's teaching him, encouraging him to find some. And I, I like that kind of thing. So, yeah, he's doing a good deal. Uh, Brennan Ashley from Hallsville. You know, yes. Hallsview, they're, they're coming along. Uh, and, of course, Raj at uh, Clyde Oak. Yes. Uh, anybody down that way. And the Patel and Justin Lai. Clemens is always going to be power mongers. And you know what? You can't count on those ladies from over there, Keith Taylor. Eliza Roper and those ones. Yeah, exactly. Those ladies. And let's not be, we get, 
Uh, Amy Zane's sister. Yes, Stacy Zane. Stacy Zane. Stacey. Uh, Calhoun. Poor Lavaca Calhoun. Yes. Uh, she, coached she, by she, Rubach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, David Rubach. Oh, I love David Rubach. He's, he's an old, old friend. We nearly lost him. Uh, oh, really? You know, to cancer. Yeah, wow. he, he had to get out for a while, but he's doing real well. Yeah, David's an old, good friend. Stacy Zhang was one of my favorite competitors. She had the biggest smile. For such a little person, sure, and, and it didn't matter if she got thirtieth or first. Her smile was huge, and I always loved Amy for that reason. Uh, she was such a sweetheart. Yeah, there's some uh, some super super kids out there. So, what would you like to say to this year's contestants? Oh, one more kid we need to mention: that boy from La Texas. Oh, uh, uh, Carter Tucker? Uh, Tucker? Carter Tucker? Yeah, Carter Tucker in mathematics. Yes. Uh, they great. don't do much number sets, but that boy, uh, everybody better be careful. That young man, he, he's pretty tough. He's really <laughs> he's great. Pretty tough. He's going to give Nicholas uh, Allison a run for his money at state. Yeah, oh, yeah. No doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. It's going to be, that's going to be a war. Hey, just so you know, we're going to, we're going to live stream on Monday and Nicholas Ellison is going to co-host with us. Yes. Yes. I saw that on your deal. I think that's great. Uh, I can't, I can't get in the live, but I will be watching yeah, it later. Uh, so, th so yeah. So what would you uh, like to say to this year's contestants? What message do we want to give them? There's, it's wonderful to be a champion. But you have to define champion. There are state champions. We're only going to put six gold medals around the nets. But those kids that work day in, day out, practice, 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 learn, practice, learn some more, they are champions. We just can't put state in front of it because there's only six. Getting there is, is just an ultimate wonderful thing. But if you don't get there, you will carry that stuff, all those things with you to the future. You may not remember the shortcut for multiplying by fives. But you will always have a strategy in your mind, and your mind will have expanded to do things that most kids cannot do today. I've always said number sense kids are not better than any other kids, but they're at a higher mental level than other ever the kids because you learn to stretch your mind. You learn to carry things in your head and move things around. And that's very difficult to explain to a non-number sensor. You know, somebody says, how do you multiply three digits by three digits in your head. And it's a matter of breaking your brain, your vision in your head into sectors and doing it. I can actually do 10 by 10 just because I've expanded my mind in such and just write down an answer, you know, from starting in the right and going to the left. So doing three by three is not a real challenge for those kids that stretch their mind. So. So doing number sense does things to your mental capabilities that you would not have if you didn't do number sense. I don't know of any other curriculum that will expand your mind so well to think on your feet than what number sense does. So all of these kids that put in those many, many hours, <clears throat> it's going to benefit them for the rest of their lives. <clears throat> and number sense requires so much special training because there are so many shortcuts. There are so many things different you can do. Uh, you just have to work and then you, you have to realize you can't do it on your own. You need coaches. You need places like the Discord where kids can talk with each other. Uh, there was a similar thing that used to be that uh, – uh, Tony Potter did many years ago. He had a similar thing to that, and kids would ask questions. Uh, my my concern with with that kind of stuff is that kids don't just don't give them shortcuts. 
help them to learn the shortcut. Uh, because it's the learning that the developing strategies that's important. It's not, it's not, oh, look, uh, 32 times 12, 32 times 28 is difference of squares. You know, 32 squared times 20, difference of squares. Why is that a difference of square? If they, if they learn that, that stays with them, not the trick. And so uh, it's, it's a contest that's, that's tough and demanding. And sometimes you think you just can't learn enough, but over time you will. But regardless of what you learn, your mental capabilities are going to be expanded. And I think that's the ultimate goal of number sets in my mind. Expand your mind. Be thinkers on your feet. Don't have to worry about, uh, as that very first thing in my chronology says, and I don't even know where I found that. I thought it was the greatest thing I'd ever read. Uh, that very first page. Uh, see if I can bring it up here as so I can read it. It is often pointed out that nine-tenths of the arithmetic used in life situations is mental arithmetic. One does not carry around a deaf man's pad and pencil to figure out change or comparative prices of oranges by the dozens of oranges or by the basket, nor the number of miles he gets from a gallon gasoline. Numbers is a language, and the development of number sense is an essential part of learning to talk effectively. I think that's powerful. And I think these kids who learn number sense will be able to talk effectively the rest of their lives. What a wonderful message. That was a wonderful, I did read that quote on your uh, chronology right away. I thought it was a wonderful way to start. And I think it's a wonderful note by which for us to end this uh, interview. Uh, that was a great note, a great note. Any final words or parting thoughts? Uh, good luck at district. Good luck at regional. Good luck at state. And I hope I get to see everybody there and they can possibly make it. Uh, I think the tests are going to be a challenge, but yet I still think there may be a 400 oh, coming. Oh, wow. well, wait and see, wait and see. Hey, I can't thank you enough. You know what my hope is, uh, Director Larry White? My hope is that our paths cross many, many, many times in the future. I do, I do too. I, I, I hope we continue to work together and talk and visit about different things because I think it's important. And what you're doing for these kids and for UIL uh, and for education is fantastic. It takes a lot of work. I know it's not easy. And I know I appreciate it like everyone else does. Hey, well, I really appreciate you. So I really appreciate your words and, and I thank you for everything. And uh, farewell, man. Our paths will cross soon. Fair. Talk to you later, so. Take care. Bye-bye. Wow, what a fascinating discussion. It's always a great pleasure when we hear from Director Larry White and his insights, his work on the history of number sense, what valuable, valuable knowledge. And it was my true, sincere, extreme pleasure to be able to share that with you. Uh, thank you, Director Larry White. Truly appreciate it. Let me take a quick moment and ask that if you enjoy this content, that you please hit the subscription button and the notification bell, that you leave a comment below, and that you uh, smash that like button. Uh, it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Let's spread this joy, let's spread this beauty to as many people as possible. I got wonderful things in store for this channel, and I truly appreciate your support. My name is Saul Cantu, and this is Texas Math Mundo. Farewell.